We're so glad that you're here tonight to learn a little bit more about EP Online for kindergarten. Opening up all my things here on my other screen. So I think we are evening out pretty quickly. So we'll get started here, everyone. My name is Grace Becker. I am here from the communications department in Eden Prairie Schools. As you can see, my name is actually Eden Prairie Schools on this call. I'm representing the district in one person. So I'm very happy to be here with you tonight. And I'm going to kick it over very shortly to our wonderful proud principal of EP Online, Dr. Nicholas Kramer, who has taken the time out of his night to come here and welcome all of you to kindergarten and answer any and all of your questions. I want to let you know before we get started that we did have some questions submitted in advance. We will get to as many of those as we possibly can. And as we go along, if you have additional questions, please feel free to send them in either the chat or the Q&A. So if you mouse over your screen, you should see two bubbles at the bottom. One says chat, one says Q&A. Whichever one you wanna use is great. I will watch them both. And when we get to the end of the presentation, Dr. Kramer will answer as many of those as we can get to. So without any further ado, I'm very happy to introduce to you, Dr. Nick Kramer. Thanks, Grace. And again, thanks everybody for taking time out of your evening um, to listen to a little bit about our program. We're going to make this super interactive and, and get to as many of your questions as we can tonight. Um, but to start with, we always ground ourselves in our mission. And here in Eden Prairie Schools, our mission is to inspire each student to learn continuously so they're empowered to reach personal fulfillment and contribute purposefully to our ever-changing world. And everything we do in EP Online is with that mission in mind. Uh, we talk about it at the beginning of every staff meeting, every, every session that we have together, and we really believe in personalizing education for each and every eagle that joins us. Um, so with that said, who are we? Um, EP Online serves uh, oh, about 400 full-time students um, across kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, we serve about 20 to 30 students per grade level. Um, and, and we also serve an additional about 200 students um, part-time um, at the secondary level. Uh, about a fourth of our students come uh, locally from Eden Prairie uh, community. And about three-fourths of our students are actually open enrolled um, from all throughout the state of Minnesota. In fact, we have students from just about every single county of the state. And so what that leads to uh, in our EP online courses is a really cool melting pot of different students from different cultures coming together um, to learn about each other and to learn about different aspects of their state and different aspects of, of different individuals' cultures that they maybe didn't know before. Um, so you can see we are uh, racially very diverse Diverse. We're geographically very diverse. Uh, we've got a wide variety of students uh, that come to us with different contexts uh, and really make up um, the strong family that we have in EP Online. Um, and one of the things we're super proud about is um, the, uh, the success that we have with students. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen um, what our EP Online averages are, um, the percentage of our students that regularly meet or exceed state standards each year is measured by the Minnesota Comprehensive Assessments um, and other uh, nationally normed um, literacy and numeracy assessments that we use and just kind of how, how we compare uh, to other um, students across the state. And so, um, like I said, at the onset of this call, we take our mission very, very seriously. Um, one question you might ask is why EP Online? Um, and we've got uh, a variety of reasons um, that students and families um, choose uh, to engage with us in an, a full-time online capacity. And every student and every family's story is, is unique. Um, but these are some of the common uh, themes that come up. Uh, one is just that opportunity for personalization. So um, in a virtual classroom like our own, uh, you'll have lots of time to really get to meet um, each other uh, and your teacher really, really well. Uh, and that starts from your very first day uh, with our program. Um, each of our teachers does a personalized welcome call with your family and your kindergartner uh, to get to know you, uh, to help you kind of understand what the program is about, uh, walk through any questions you might have, and really making sure that that um, kindergartner is feeling good about the first day of school. And so um, that's not just something that happens, you know, once or twice throughout the year, but each and every day we've got um, time in our teacher's day uh, that it's flexible um, and that they can work one-on-one uh, -on -one or small groups uh, as needed uh, beyond um, just the great programming we're doing in a whole class setting. 
Um, another reason cho students choose EP online is, is opportunity. Um, so we have a wide variety of specialized or advanced courses. Um, we provide um, instruction in, in various content areas um, that we'll share more about. Um, at the elementary level, some of the specials uh, that we have are physical education, art, uh, music, um, Spanish. And so um, sometimes those are programs that you may not have in your local district um, and that um, attract students uh, to come to our program um, to engage in that rigorous academic programming. Um, another thing uh, that a lot of our families really like is the flexibility that comes with online. Uh, we've got numerous students um, who engage in a variety of extracurricular commitments um, that sometimes conflict with what would be happening in a normal um, kind of brick and mortar school day. Um, and our school provides a lot of flexibility then to be able to access that learning anytime and anywhere. And so while there's a lot that we do synchronously for our kindergartners um, in real time, and I'll share a, a sample schedule here in just a little bit later in the call, um, there's also lots of time throughout the day um, that students can engage in that work um, asynchronously at home um, or make up some of that work later in the day or the week uh, if, they, if they need to flex that time to spend more time with family, to do something outdoors, to engage in a, a sport or a musical um, passion of theirs. Uh, and so that's a, a compelling reason. And then finally, um, just you know, the safety and security that comes from being able to engage in learning from your own home. Um, so whether you have physical health concerns sickness concerns, mental health, um, bullying, violence, um, you know, uh, online again allows you to um, engage in a, in a quality uh, public school education, but in the comfort of your own home. And so um, all of these are reasons why uh, we're proud to offer this option to students across the state of Minnesota. Um, who is EPO as far as our staff is concerned? Uh, we've got a phenomenal group of educators um, who love not just students and not just education, but love online education uh, and have been doing this for a number of years. Um, starts with our leadership team. As Grace said, I'm, I'm the principal of our team, uh, but we also have a dean of students who works uh, really to cultivate those family relationships, uh, Mr. Patrick Rock. Uh, we've got an instructional excellence coordinator, Kevin McGee, who works with our staff to really make sure that they're at the top of their game and learning new strategies all the time. And we've got a great um, admin assistant team as well um, that man our office and, and provide great customer service and quick turnaround time for any questions you have or, or issues you might be encountering. Um, on our teaching side, uh, we've got uh, 14 full-time classroom teachers across our K-12 spectrum. Um, so right now at the elementary level, um, each cohort has either one or two um, full-time teachers. Um, and we have um, the same um, low class sizes online that uh, in Prairie Schools prides ourselves in um, in person as well. So at a kindergarten level, um, right now, uh, we currently have just 16 um, kindergartners in our classroom. And so that's just amazing um, teacher to student ratio and it kind of speaks again to that personalization that you see. Um, we also have numerous other student uh, teachers helping predominantly at the secondary level in a part-time capacity. Uh, but we also have specialized teachers. So we have student supports teachers in the areas of special education, uh, of multilingual learning. Uh, we have a full-time uh, reading interventionist, and we've got other um, math interventionists that can help fill in some gaps for students if they need that extra support. Um, and we have a fully robust academic support team as well. So we've got a full-time guidance counselor, a social worker, uh, ed psychologist, um, a nurse, um, all again, coming together to really make sure that we're serving students and giving them what they need. Um, on the tech front, um, we utilize a variety of different hardware and software platforms uh, to bring the education to life. Um, as an EP online student, um, a kindergartners will be issued their very own iPad at the start of the year, and we'll spend the year, you know, really helping them to, to become fluent and proficient um, and self-dependent uh, or self-sufficient in using that hardware. It, it's amazing to see um, how far they come from that very first um, day of kindergarten to the last day. Uh, I My own um, twin kindergartners went through the program online as well, and it was fun to watch in my own home um, just how much growth they had that first year. 
Um, but we, yeah, we use um, Apple products, so iPads as our hardware. Um, we use Schoology as a learning management system. So that is where um, we have a little app on the iPad that students will click on, but it'll take them to Schoology each day. And within that um, learning management system, students will have different courses that they'll click in and they'll have um, different modules that they can read, videos they can watch, um, places for them to upload their work um, as they go throughout the year. Um, as a parent, you'll have access to Infinite Campus, which is our student information system. And so that's where you'll be able to track um, student progress um, in, as far as grades are concerned and assessment scores and things of that nature. And then finally, uh, we utilize Zoom, um, just like you're doing right now, um, as our asynchronous learning platform. And so um, students will, um, each and every day, um, pop on a Zoom call multiple times throughout the day and engage in some um, whole class learning, as well as small group and individualized sessions with their teachers. Um, we're really proud to also be able to provide um, um, super high quality technology support. We have a full-time dedicated um, EP online tech support person um, who um, helms um, you know, our, our desk, both in person if you need to come in for support or virtually um, she can set up a, a Zoom call and walk through things or even remote um, kind of fix some of the issues you might be encountering on the iPad. Um, and um, you can also call or email 24 hours a day um, and get quick responses to your help there. Um, so finally, uh, maybe the, the information uh, folks are the most curious about is, you know, what does a typical day look like in an EP online kindergartner's life? Uh, this is a sample schedule. You know, every year um, these building blocks uh, may adjust a little bit as far as like when during the day they exist, but um, all of these are going to be features that you would see um, next year as a kindergartner with EP online. And so we always start the day with a morning meeting. It's usually about nine o'clock, maybe 8.45, 8.50, just again, kind of depends on um, how the rest of the day plays out. But that morning meeting is an opportunity for the students to really just get warmed up, uh, to get to greet their teacher, to greet one another, to build some of those interpersonal relationships, um, meet other kindergartners uh, around the state, uh, and, and really form a, a tight-knit community. Um, and so we use a, a program called Caring Schools Community to really help scaffold um, that learning. Um, from there, typically we'll then launch into a whole class reading lesson. Uh, so our teacher will do a read aloud and will help students focus on some um, making meaning comprehension strategies um, as they are starting to become readers themselves. Uh, and then students will have um, some independent work time while the teacher is pulling small groups of students based on their current reading level um, and providing more of that reading foundational skills work with students that are really going to help them um, become the readers, learn um, phonics and phonemics um, and build their oral fluency um, so that they uh, can become proficient. And like I said, we'll meet students wherever they are. So whether they're still learning um, their alphabet or whether they're already off and running um, as an early kindergartner, um, we'll meet them where they are as a reader and kind of keep furthering and accelerating their growth. And so um, when students are not meeting in that small group during that time, um, they'll have some independent work time uh, at home where they'll have access to a wide ranging library of virtual texts where they'll be able to read some of that or read a book that they have at home in their own library. Um, they'll do some independent writing work. They'll do some word work, um, all that the teachers kind of prepped for them um, as they kind of go through their day. And then typically students will come back together then for a daily writing lesson and they'll have some whole class instruction in um, how to you know, start to compose their ideas and put that on the page and, and work on handwriting and, and all that good stuff uh, that kindergartners do. Uh, at some point throughout the day, it doesn't necessarily have to be where it is in the sample schedule, um, students will engage in specials instruction. And as I mentioned before, um, we're proud to be able to offer four different specials. Uh, each of those is taught by a different separate specialized teacher who has um, content area expertise um, in that subject. And so we've got an art teacher, uh, a physical education and health teacher, a music teacher, and a Spanish teacher. And students will spend about a month with each of those students during the first half of the year. 
And then they'll circle back and spend about a month with those teachers for the second half of the year. And so they really will get a lot of great hands-on exposure in each of those areas. Uh, and at times you may wonder, like, what does that look like? You know, how do you do PE in an online environment? Um, it's pretty darn amazing. Um, but we will have students up and moving and running around and, um, and, and going through different routines and exercises with their teacher in real time. Um, same thing with Spanish. Well, your students will really start to understand the language and the culture um, and, and get to start to use that. We'll be making music. They'll be making art. Um, it's, it's, it's a highlight of the day. Um, Often at the middle of the day, students will have a break for lunch um, and recess. Of course, recess is whatever you want to make it to be. Uh, a lot of our, again, our families appreciate having some time uh, to get outside, uh, to burn off some energy. Uh, we do often, oft, often offer um, some virtual recesses throughout the week. So if students do want time with their friends in their EP online kindergarten class, they can pop on that call with our paraprofessional and they might read a book together or do some art together, uh, you know, color, uh, play a board game virtually and, um, and just have time to talk. Um, and so that is uh, a feature that we like to throw throughout the week as well for students that want to take advantage of it. Um, the second half of the day tends to be a little bit more flexible um, because um, the curriculum that we use for math, for science, and for social studies um, allows uh, students to be able and families to be able to engage in that asynchronously if they if they want to or need to. And so when I say asynchronously, I mean they can do it at a time other than what is um, shown in this schedule. But uh, we do offer Monday through Thursday lesson launches in math and in science and social studies. So for about a half hour, the teacher will preview some of the content that you'll find in those Schoology modules and help kind of um, initially teach some of the major concepts, or they may reteach something from the previous day if they saw students were having some um, troubles with it. But then um, at that point, the students will go off and start to work uh, independently on whatever the task is that day. Um, meanwhile, the teacher is available if that student needs some additional support, wants to pop back on for a quick conference, things like that. And so we'll have a lesson launch in math, a lesson launch in either science or social studies. Those units will alternate throughout the year. And then towards the end of the day, um, just again, some additional flexible time that um, many students may be done for the day or they may have a few things they need to go back and finish up from earlier. Um, but meanwhile, that teacher is available um, if um, there are any connections that need to be made or further intervention or enrichment might be needed. Um, the last thing to point out, and you may have seen it already, but we um, are also proud to be able to offer what we call Flex Fridays. And so while the morning on Friday uh, is going to start very, very similar, um, the afternoon um, is by design uh, an asynchronous learning day. And so that provides students and families a lot of flexibility at the end of the week. If they need to finish anything up, they've got time to do that. If they've got everything finished, um, you can kind of start that weekend a little early, um, which I know is something uh, they appreciate. But meanwhile, our staff and faculty are spending those Friday afternoons engaging in professional learning together, having some of those uh, student support meetings that we may be uh, needing to check in on. Um, if we need to do some conferences with families, we've got time to be able to do that in that in that week uh, to make it happen. So that is our schedule in a nutshell. And that brings us to the portion of the session where we'll be able to answer questions that you have. Um, we'll get through as many as we can tonight, but know that we're also happy to engage in a personalized conversation with you. So if you ever uh, want to reach out to us either by email or phone, we're happy to pop on a Zoom call like this. Uh, we'd be um, glad to talk through any additional questions you might have. Thank you so much, Dr. Kramer. And I know we had a couple of folks join after we started. So if you do have questions, please feel free to send them either in the chat or the Q&A. We'll pull them out of there and I will ask them on your behalf to Dr. Kramer. So a question that we get all the time, Dr. Kramer, is, okay, I've got my youngest, littlest possible learner here. So it's a new experience for them, right? Not just being in school all day, but then also being in school online. So you mentioned having your two twins go through this program. What do you suggest for families to really help them be successful in the kindergarten experience in EP online? Yeah, that's a great question. And our, you know, our kindergarten teachers are just amazing. <laughs> they, they really work miracles, right? Um, and so I think some of it is really just trust the process, right? Um, I, I won't lie, right? Those first couple of weeks can be a little trying for all parties involved, right? 
as our littlest ones are, are learning to navigate the technology, as we're learning to help them navigate the technology, you'll definitely need to be a little bit more hands-on as that parent helper for those first couple of weeks in September. But uh, by, by this time in the school year, um, you really start to see a, a shift happening. Um, our, our kindergartners are starting to learn kind of those routines and habits. They've learned how to kind of troubleshoot some of the common issues that are, are maybe stumping them at first, and, and they really start to become a whole a lot more self-sufficient at that point. Um, that said, you know, some things that are just helpful that we've learned and that we'll advise. And, and again, you'll have that um, opportunity to meet with that kindergarten teacher one-on-one -on -one in that initial family welcome call to talk through a lot of these strategies and questions that you might have as well. But, you know, one, just finding a, a space in your house that is going to be where that kindergartner does school. And it could be a lot of different places. Um, and, you know, with my own twins, uh, we had them in different parts of the house because uh, we found that worked better both for their attention and even just for like feedback and things like that. So one of our um, twins kind of set up in a portion of our dining room. And so, you know, obviously during... Um, during evenings and things like that morph into a regular dining room again, but during the school day, we would have just a little kind of desk table area to the side where we kept uh, his resources and we kind of put that out each morning for him in that space. And then our other one used uh, a little desk area in his bedroom. Um, and so, you know, as long as you have a place that's going to be um, relatively quiet um, and, you know, headphones uh, might be a great uh, investment um, to help, you know, with noise if that's an issue. Um, but having a space that's kind of their own and that they are going to be able to focus is going to be a key, key component. And, and then again, just really helping to start to learn those schedules and those routines. And um, our, our, like I said, our kindergarten teachers are going to be great about building that for you. Um, but, but then once you've kind of got it established, you know, continuing to get into that routine for, um, for your own family. And, and you'll know best kind of when it's going to make the most sense to engage in work when it's not, you know, some will just go straight through the day like you would in a brick and mortar school um, and kind of be done at the end of the day. Um, other families will find, you know what, like it actually makes sense for us. We want to do math in the evenings, right? Um, and, and so you, you want to find a rhythm that's going to work best for you and then kind of stick with it. And, and you'll find, I think that um, things start to work really smoothly then after you've done that for a week or two. You mentioned our awesome kindergarten teachers and how few students are in the classes. And that just really allows for some great relationship building. Could you share a little bit about how you've seen kindergarten teachers help these young learners meet each other and grow relationships socially too? Yeah. I mean, just the the love and enthusiasm that just pours out of our kindergarten classroom anytime I go in there, you know, on a Zoom call like this, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and again, it's, you know, it starts with our teachers, but, um, but it really pervades our entire school and our entire system. Um, but yeah, they, they truly um, invest that time to get to know every family and every kid to know where they're passions are, what drives them, to take that time every day, you know, before we even get into the academics, to really make sure that students are feeling heard and seen um, and, and just a part of the environment and excited to be there. Um, we'll do fun theme days throughout the year where kids might dress up or have fun backgrounds and things like that. Uh, it just, it's a, it's a super fun place to be. Um, and here in a little bit at the end of the call, we'll share, you know, we do have a couple of other events throughout the year, one of which you'll, you'll have an opportunity to meet some of our kindergarten teachers and experience what um, kind of a sample lesson might look like. Um, so you can see and feel that in real time. But, um, but it, again, it just starts with their heart and, and they've got big, big hearts. All right. Well, I don't see any questions in the Q&A or the chat. So if anybody who's tuning in live wants to send those in, please do. We did have one that was submitted in advance. So I'll ask that now. It's a pretty specific question, which is, is it possible for a student to test out of kindergarten and start in first grade instead? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, we we uh, maybe to back it up even just a second. We we do take that idea of assessment seriously. Um, and yet they're kindergartners. We want them to love to play, to enjoy learning. But we will utilize throughout the course of the year uh, a variety of different assessment tools. Uh, we one of them is FastBridge. It's a nationally normed assessment that really allows us to kind of see where are students progressing in their literacy skills and their numeracy skills um, in relation to students their age all across the country. And it will really will also help us identify um, if there are certain areas that we need to zone in on and provide a little bit more support with. Um, and so 
Um, you, that just is part of what our teachers are doing. That's part of what we use those Friday afternoons for to really dig into data, to kind of see how kids are progressing and, and doing everything we can to um, accelerate that growth at the same time of promoting a love of learning. Um, so um, that said, yes, we do have formal processes in our district. It's the same ones we would use in our brick and mortar schools around um, if you believe your student uh, might be uh, be better suited um, by looking at a different grade level placement. Um, we would uh, look at a variety of uh, different assessments that we can administer and kind of see whether or not that makes sense on kind of where they are on their current trajectory. Um, and happy to talk more about that with you if that's a question you have. All right, still no questions right now. So we'll move on forward and maybe pop back at the end and see if anybody has some tailing questions. Wonderful. Well, um, you know, the final word that we wanted you to hear from is, is not me, this old man, um, but actually uh, our kindergartners themselves. So this is a little welcome video that Miss Mate put together from some of our um, previous kindergartners about what they enjoy about kindergarten. So I hope you hope you enjoy. Kindergartners, my name is Kyla and I'm a kindergartner in ET Online. I like kindergarten because I like Miss Mate and I like art and I like Spanish and I love music and science. I get to meet new people, learn new things. And I use and I do dance parties, meet new teachers, and I even get to meet new friends. And I'm happy to be a, a kindergartner. What I like in kindergarten, my teacher teaches me a lot of math and reading. I could never do them when I didn't have kindergarten. Kindergarten is fun. We get to learn a lot. Like like science, social studies, English, math, and specialists are gem, art, Spanish, and also music. I love breakout rooms. Tip breakout rooms is where Mr. Tay puts us in a breakout room and we need to decide on things. Every day with my mom and my students are respectful to, to my teacher, Mr. Tay, and the teachers respectful to everyone. And I also love my teacher, Miss Monte, a lot. She makes it fun and educational. <laughs> education, <laughs> okay. I love my teacher because he helps me learn. Love my friends. Okay. Bread, Bjorn, and Matthew. Okay. And Troy, it's a boy. I have four friends. Okay. Bye. Uh, just warms my heart. Oops. So, you know, as we think about next steps, again, we're happy to continue to hold on the call and answer other questions you have. And we also shared how you can reach out to us if you want to engage in a personalized conversation. But at any point this year, if you decide um, that you feel like this is the place you want to be, um, you can start that enrollment process by um, either coming in person or starting it online at edenpr.org slash enroll. Uh, we will have two other events um, this school year for you to learn just a little bit more. And so in January, we'll have a parent panel where we will bring on some current parents of kindergartners, and you can kind of hear from them their perspectives and ask them questions. Uh, and then later in May, uh, we'll have a kindergarten welcome night um, for either students that have already chosen to enroll or students that are thinking about it. They'll have an opportunity to meet with one of our kindergarten teachers and each other uh, and engage in, as I said before, a bit of a sample, sample lesson to get a taste for what it's all about. Um, so we hope you'll um, continue to join us for those opportunities um, and continue to explore um, EP online. And we would um, love to serve you and your student and your family next year. Uh, thanks so much for taking time tonight.